Sasri Akal to all the viewers of KCGC TV. Myself, Mrs. Geet Bawa, Assistant Professor from the Department of Computer Science, Khalsa College for Women Amritsar. It's my privilege to be here in front of you through KCGC TV to present my lecture on the topic Data Structure and its role in our day-to-day -day lives. Learning data structure is very important for each and every student of computer science who wish to pursue career as software developer. For the layman, data structure is nothing but just a container which stores, edit, processes, organizes the data. To explain the concept, let me take a few examples from the real life. For properly maintaining students' record in schools and colleges, what the teachers do? Of course, they maintain an attendance register. Now, the student's attendance can be thought of as like data and the attendance register as data structure. Why? Because attendance register stores the attendance of students in an organized way. Similarly, we all have almiras in our household for organizing our clothes and other accessories. Now, these clothes and other accessories can be thought of like data and the almira as data structure. In computer science students, data is a valuable asset. So it is very important for us to find out ways to manage those data. Here comes the need of data structure. Now let's begin our presentation. Now data structure and its role in our day to day lives. Now students, let me start with you from the definition of data. What is data? According to the dictionary, data is quantities characters or symbol on which operations are performed by computers which may be stored and transmitted in the form of electrical signals and recorded on magnetic, optical and mechanical recording media. So any symbol, any character can be considered as data which we can use for operations which we can store in electronic media. For example, I have an equation C equals to A plus B. Now here A and B are my data. Why? Because they store quantities. They can be used to perform an operation. They can be processed. They can be stored in electronic media. So A and B are my data. Now the question is when the data becomes an information. Now see students, these are just a collection of characters. It doesn't have any meaning that this these collection of characters are not meaningful to us. But if we reverse this string then we get a meaningful result. What we get? We get my name is Jaspri. Now this string is giving us some information. So this is what a processed data. So we can say if data is arranged in a systematic way, then it gets a structure and becomes meaningful. So this meaningful or processed data is called an information. Now students, to provide an appropriate way to structure the data, we need to know about data structures. Now what is data structure? Data structures can be defined as any logical or mathematical model of particular organization of data. In other words, a data structure is a systematic way to organize data so that it can be used efficiently. Now students, we have two types of data structures, linear data structure and nonlinear data structure. Now we will explain both these data structures one by one. Now, first of all, linear data structure. A data structure is linear if all the elements of data structure are arranged in a sequence. The examples of linear data structure are stacks, queue, array, and linked list. Now, all of these are linear data structure. Now, students, how can you recognize whether a data structure is linear or not? So, simple. If a data structure, if each element of data structure has one predecessor and one successor, the exceptions are there, the first and the last element, then that data structure is linear. After linear data structure, we have nonlinear data structures and nonlinear data structures are those which doesn't have any sequence form of data. For example, trees and graphs. Now you can see in the tree what is happening. Each node doesn't have both the conditions. It doesn't have one predecessor and one successor. So it is nonlinear data structure. Now what we are going to do is we are going to explain all these six data structures, arrays, stacks, queues, linked list, trees and graphs one by one and we will see their real life examples. So let us start with the term array. Now what is an array? 
An array is a data structure containing a number of data values, all of which are of same type. Students, this definition may seem a little bit confusing to you. So let me divide the definition into three parts and explain you part by part. Now let us discuss the first part, an array is a data structure. Why an array is a data structure? Now what is a data structure? Data structure is a format for organizing and storing data. Now, for example, an array is a data structure which you can visualize as follows. So imagine an array as a large chunk of memory divided into smaller blocks of memory and each block is capable of storing data values of some type. So array can store data. That's why array is a data structure. So I hope the first part of the definition is clear. Now let's move to the next part containing a number of data values. So what does that mean? For that, I have taken two examples. In the first array, I have taken 10 data values and in the second example, I have taken five data values. Now you can see arrays are used to store data items. So I hope the second part of the definition is also clear to you. Now let's come to the third part, all of which are of same type. What the, does that mean? Now for that, I have taken three examples. In the first array A, I have taken all the elements of integer type. In the second example, I have taken all the elements of character type. But in the third example, I have taken few elements of integer type, few of floating point type and few of character type. Now students, it is not possible to take different types of elements in an array. So it means array A and array B are correct, but array C is incorrect. Now the definition is clear to you. An array is a data structure containing a number of data values, all of which are of same type. So students, let us see the real life examples of an array. Do you know which data structure is used to store an image as a bitmap? The answer is arrays. You know the image is a collection of pixels. What is pixel? Pixel stands for picture element. So we can store the image as, an, as a 2D array of pixels. So that's why a two-dimensional array of size 37 by 40 is enough to store this image. So whatever pictures you click on your phone or your laptop or your personal computers, they all are stored in computer's memory with the help of an array. There is another real-life example of an array. Whenever you want to book a ticket for a movie or a theater online, then such type of screen comes in front of you. You can see these blocks are nothing but the seats and these seats are arranged in a form of an array. Now if the customer wants to book a seat, like suppose customer wants to book the third seat of HH row of gold section, then that seat would be stored in computer's memory in the form of array. So this is another real life example of an array. Students. After discussing an array, the next type of data structure is stack. A stack is a linear data structure in which insertion and deletion are allowed only at the end called the top of the stack. Stack is also a linear data structure, but it is different from array. Why? Because in array, insertions and deletions can be done from anywhere. But in stack, insertion and deletion can be done only from one end, that is top of the stack. Let me take an example. We have stack of books. We have stack of coins. Now students, what happens? If I want to access a book from the stack, then which book would be easily accessed? Naturally, physics. And if I want to access a coin from the stack of coins, which coin can I easily pick? Of course, the topmost coin. So this is what stack is. But students, you may question me, ma'am, can't we assess chemistry book before assessing the physics book or can't we assess mathematics book before assessing the physics book? The answer is yes, we can. But students, I want you to suppose that these stacks or these books and coins are placed in a glass jar. So now it is impossible for anyone to pick mathematics or chemistry book before picking the physics book or it is impossible for anyone to pick the coin from the middle. So this glass jar is nothing but our stack. Now students, two types of operations can be performed on stack. One is push. What is push? If we have a data and we insert the data in the stack, that operation is called push operation. Second operation performed on stack is pop. What is pop? Pop is nothing but the deletion of an element from a stack. If we have an element in a stack and we want to delete it, it means it is a pop operation. 
Now students, stack is the last in first out data structure. Why? Because you know the last book that you inserted in the glass jar was physics book. And the first book you can pick from the stack is also the physics book. So the element which is inserted last in the stack is the first one to be removed. That's why stack is the last in first out data structure. Now let us see some real life examples of stack. Students, stack data structure is used in implementing redo and undo feature. In any word processor, whenever we do redo or undo, then stacks are used. How? Let me explain. Let me take an example of Google Docs. Now here, I have typed a word quality, then I took a pause, then I typed ed, then I took a pause, and then I typed cation. Now what will happen, these three words would be pushed in stack one by one. Now I got to know that I have incorrectly spelled education. I have missed you. So what will I do? I'll press Control plus Z for the undo operation and what will happen? The last typed word or the last action would be shifted to redo stack. So this is how stacks are used to perform undo and redo operations. Students, there is another example, real life example of stack. Stacks are used while assessing web pages. How? Now students, this is a picture of web page of Khalsa College for Women, that is my college. And whenever we assess a website, what happens? A URL is generated. That URL is pushed in stack. Suppose I click on faculty option on this page. Now again, a new URL will be generated and that URL will again be pushed in stack. From this page, I assess some another option. Then a new URL will be generated and that URL will again be pushed in stack. And when I want to assess the previous page, what happens? The topmost assess is popped from the stack and I reach to that page. So this is how stacks are used in assessing web pages also. After discussing the two linear data structures, let us discuss the third data structure that is Q. Students, like stacks, Q is a linear data structure which follows a particular order in which the operations are performed. The order is first in, first out. Let me explain why Q is first in, first out. So for that, let us assume a queue of people standing in a shopping mall waiting for the billing. So what happens? The person who has entered in the queue at first would be served first and would be the first one to be removed from queue. So that's why we say queue is first in, first out data structure. The difference between the stack and the queue is in removing. In stack, we remove the item the most recently added. In the queue, we remove the item least recently added. So the queue is first in, first out data structure. After discussing queue, the last linear data structure is linked list. You know linked list is nothing but a collection of nodes and each node is divided into two parts, data part and the link part. Data parts contain the data item and link part contains the address of next node of linked list. Let me take an example. I have four elements. I want to store those elements in memory using linked list. Then what will happen? All these elements would be stored in data portion of the node of linked list. Now in the link part of each node, it stores the address of the next node so that all the nodes are connected to each other. And we have a special variable called the head variable or the start variable which stores the address of the first node of linked list. So this was all about linked list. Now let us see what is a practical example of a linked list in our day-to-day -day lives. Students, whenever we use music system and we create our own playlist, then what happens? All the songs that we put in our playlist, they are stored in the form of linked list. How? See. In the first note of the linked list, in the data part, song will be stored and in the link part, the address of or the location of next song will be stored. And once my first song is played, the control automatically moves to the next song and similarly to the third song till my playlist ends. And when the playlist ends, and the linked list also ends. Now see, the link part of the last note contains null value, which shows end of linked list. So students, this is a real life example of linked list. 
Now we have discussed all the four linear data structures. Now it's the time to discuss nonlinear data structures. We have two nonlinear data structures, trees and graphs. Now let us see the real life example of these data structures. Storing the friendship information in the social networking site. Students, you know, whichever social media we use, LinkedIn, Instagram, Quora, Facebook, all the information is stored in form of graph. Now let me explain to you with an example. Let us suppose James is a friend of Mark. So the nodes of the graph, they contain the information of James and Mark and the edge shows the relationship among them. Now suppose James is also a friend to Leah. So there is an edge between James and Leah, but Lucy is a friend of Mark and Leah and Lucy is not a friend of James. So this whole information is stored in the form of graphs. So students, this was all about different data structures and their roles in our day-to-day -day lives. Thank you very much.